We've just published paper in Current Biology, and it's a remarkable piece of work. It's a collective effort. It's a, I think, a uniquely Cornell story. It is the first time, it's the first report of the neurophysiological analysis of vision in a jumping spider. I'd, let me introduce the members of the team. Um, so to my, to my left, we have Gil Menda, who is the electrophysiologist on the team. This project was when I was a, a grad student. Currently, I'm a postdoc in the lab. Uh, I'm the neurophysiologist of the team. Um, so I did the recording with the jumping spiders, uh, solved the problem of recording with jumping spiders. Since they are uh, a little bit problematic, uh, they are carrying uh, high pressure in their body. And whenever you poke them, they explode and die. And what I did here is actually uh, solve that method and uh, bring all the data to the team, and then the team took the data and uh, create all the kind of the analysis. To my immediate right is James Golden, who is doing a, uh, his PhD thesis is actually on, on humans. I'm a PhD student in the Department of Psychology. Um, I joined the Hoy Lab a few years ago. I, I met Gil um, when he TA'd a neurophysiology course that I took. And um, I, I started, when we started with the spiders, I was helping to build the movie stimuli that we use, um, and I also help with the analysis. I do the spike sorting, and I help build the figures. To James's right is Paul Shamble, who is doing a graduate, who is doing his PhD jointly with, in my lab, and Rob Raguso, our chairman. Um, I'm a PhD student here in neurobiology and behavior. Um, I'm part of the Hoy Lab, and uh, as far as this project goes, um, I suppose I'm sort of the resident arachnologist. Um, and uh, I also did a little bit of, um, a little bit of whatever was needed, a little bit of programming here and there for building stimuli and, and analyzing data. To Paul's right, we have Eyal Nitsani, who uh, has so many titles and affiliations that he'll have to speak for himself. I'm a, a PhD student in the program of uh, Computational Biology and Medicine, the CBM program of Cornell, which is used to call the Tri-I program, which includes the Memorial Sloan Kettering uh, Institute in the city, uh, well, Cornell Medical College, also in the city, they're just across each other, and uh, well, Cornell University. Um, I'm actually doing my PhD here. I have I have two supervisors. One is here, the other one is in the um, in the medical college, and I'm in department in the department here. I'm in the bio biological statistics and computational biology, and in the department in the well is the brain and mind research institute. So. My main contribution to this uh, to this project was about uh, the, anal the analytical stuff, uh, statistics, and also we brought some uh, very unique mathematical stimuli that help us uh, expose um, something about the integration of different kinds of uh, uh, um, different kinds of inputs. Let me show you some of the stimulus that we used in order to to expose this uh, very unique. Um, uh, phenomena about the, the spiders. So here we have it here. And this is actually, most of you would probably look at this and this is kind of a white noise. It's moving to the right and it's moving to the left and then you see some other kinds of things. And so using th this stimuli, this is a very unique mathematical stimuli that each uh, pixel is black and white and changing in, in different uh, frame rate. And we can use this stimuli in order to expose uh, the interactions between the eyes. Our vision group is, are investigating the nerve basis of the vision of jumping spiders for the first time. We are working with uh, Philippus adex. This is a jumping spider that uh, uh, mainly in the northeast of the United States. So I put the spider in the refrigerator for a few minutes just to slow her down. Okay. Take the 3D holder that we, we have designed. Okay, once the holder is set like that, the next step is actually to wax the chalicerols. It's very crucial that there will be no movement artifact once we are recording a template here, the holder. I can lock it here on the side with wax. Okay. 
brain. So the brain is located uh, between uh, the two eyes, the two rare eyes, and I will poke around uh, this area over here. So the trick is to uh, poke the spider in the right location because I do only one hole, uh, try to do one hole because she's eye pressurized. Very gently I'm poking the cuticle until I open the surface of it. Since I really want to try to make a very, very small hole. Okay, so we are using a extra small electrode, it's a 4 mega ohm a tungsten electrode. And so the first step is just to lower the electrode uh, to the right location. So the receptive field is in this area on the left. Can you see the laser? Okay. So what you can see on the screen is the appearance of the of the fly, and once uh, the fly uh, in the right location in the receptive field of the of the spider, and the spider recognizes it, uh, you can hear this very very strong response uh, uh, of these uh, several uh, units. So we can see here several classes of neurons that are responding uh, to the appearance of the fly. The spiders are unique since they deserted the, the web in their evolution and they actually use their eyes and food to hunt their prey. Uh, they have uh, their uh, big eyes, the median's eyes uh, resolution is almost as a, a human resolution, a little bit lower. But since uh, in our eyes we have the motion and the acuity in one eye, the spiders uh, just separate the motion to the lateral eyes and the eye acuity with a, a moving retina to the anterior median eyes. You've now seen how four very talented students who come from diverse backgrounds can pool their talents working as a team to crack one of the toughest problems in spider biology. Um, now we've done so in jumping spiders and of course jumping spiders, if it's not obvious from what you've seen earlier, are very small. And it turns out that another group of scientists or engin engineers and roboticists are also interested in how very small animals do remarkable things. And these are roboticists or engineers. They are always looking for ways to miniaturize biosensors and in this case uh, visual sensors. And it has not escaped our notice that jumping spiders, having e evolved a unique set of eyes, one set outsourced for detecting motion and another for very fine vision, so fine scale that it's almost as good as our own eye eyes, um, this should interest the roboticists.